we started versioning PL early in our history, and that's a good way of shipping changes to an organization in releases that enables everybody to kind of readapt to a changing system. Uh, early on, when you're a much smaller group, you can ship changes really quickly. Um, it's easy to diffuse some new way of doing things, um, and then you can adapt. As you scale into larger and larger groups, especially if you work together with many other organizations and teams and people and so on, it can be extremely useful to adopt a release cadence like software. Uh, so that's why we have built our um, release schedule in a sense and, think, and break it down into minor releases every quarter and major releases every year. So you know, today we're in uh, 2022, we're in PLV8. Uh, and we broadly encourage the network that whenever you're interacting with many other groups and shipping new programs and new releases, you try and, and bundle it across the quarter boundary or the yearly boundary and use that to kind of like reinfuse a lot, lot of new programs and so on. Now, of course, you should be shipping early and often, right? MVPs uh, ship when you need to, make the changes when you need to. Uh, but these quarter and yearly boundaries are great times to kind of advertise to everybody else because uh, you can think of like the entire network shifting gears in those moments, right? So imagine kind of a large scale operation. If you try and change gears constantly, it can be difficult to do that well. So really lean on those kind of quarter and yearly boundaries to apply changes. Now, I want to tell you about some of the large changes that we started with um, from, you know, that, that we kind of brought us into this year. So in PLv7, the landscape of, of PL looked like this. We had a set of teams that interacted and worked with a lot of groups. We had a, um, a number of investments uh, across many different groups. And we also offered uh, lots of grants to many groups across the broader ecosystem um, and across many companies and so on. And so uh, one of the things that uh, shifted uh, very significantly from PLV7 to PLV8 was that we wanted to get rid of that kind of like cell wall boundary that prevented uh, our teams from working together across the network. And so we turned the network into this, PLV8. This was a slide that we showed um, last year. And we set off to build the builders network, the talent network, um, and to help support you know, the range of network teams um, and support them with a set of network services. At the time, we had you know, a set of uh, principles uh, to help us, guide us into this shift, things like scaling the network, investing in and empowering our growing ecosystem, and building upon existing teams. Um, so this is you know, helping teams serve as, as they existed, uh, grow into the network. We have a whole set of challenges and opportunities, um, and we tackled a ton of them uh, extremely well, and, um, and we have now sit in the, in the success of that. Now, as we shift into 2023, I want to tell you about the new sets of challenges and opportunities, the new principles, and um, what's going to shift. So uh, PLV8 was a very large change from PLV7 to PLV8. That was like a major shift. In PLV9, we are not going to have a very large uh, change at all. Uh, we're just going to double down on the successes and grow to um, add missing programs or things that we now know um, are really valuable. So we're going to be, uh, as a whole community, making adjustments and tweaks uh, to various systems and building out some new programs. Uh, so this is you know, one key um, slide and, and key framing that I want everyone to take away is this model of saying, hey, there's the R&D pipeline. There's the innovation chasm there in that early part of R&D. Um, and what we're, we're going to do very well and be very successful if we can help more of those kind of very early stage research ideas translate all the way into successful companies. And so usually, if you're doing something um, that is helping other groups and so on, find the spot of the pipeline that, you, that you're in. It could be that you are uh, supportive across the board. But if, you can, if you're sort of especially for one area, find the other sets of groups and teams that, that operate in that, that area and form common principles. Now, there's a set of new programs that we'll be um, uh, developing over, over next year. Uh, we hope to build a, you know, we, we hope to grow our worldwide events and now finally have a proper calendar. This is one of the most requested features across the network to actually have a calendar with dates <laughs> and commit to them. Um, we uh, hope to also have role and domain specific events. So one of the things that we have started trying out is to create events very focused across specific disciplines or specific industries um, to help bring the people and connect there and build relationships. Uh, so that's some of the things we'll be doing. We're also uh, going to be uh, improving uh, 
a lot of the parts around starting new, uh, new systems. So one part of that is reaching out to many more communities to talk about the offerings and programs that we have. Uh, many times, communities are like, super surprised to hear about like, the awesome programs that we have. Uh, so we're going to be doing a lot more outreach to many communities so that they can um, uh, leverage these programs. And we're going to be doing a lot more requests for startups. This is one of the areas where we just get to see so many amazing business models, like sometimes uh, uh, way ahead. And um, if we do a lot more requests for startups, that could, that'll help uh, stimulate that environment. Uh, there's a ton of things coming around Falcoin. Um, you know, earlier on, we saw sort of like DeFi and NFTs and so on about a year or two years ahead of, uh, ahead of the curve. Um, so we hope that those are going to help uh, people start earlier. Uh, and we're going to also start coupling some of our knowledge programs earlier on. So most of our knowledge programs sort of come after, um, kind of like later in the, in the pipeline, um, but, but some of them might actually be really helpful earlier on. Now, in the capital side, in the venture capital part, uh, you already heard from Brad about the SP fund and the FEM fund. Those are going to be um, uh, really important components. Um, there will likely be some other uh, things down the road. And in network capital, uh, we hope to add and scale the structures. So there's a number of new programs that will ship sometime uh, next year, and many that are working really well, and we've sort of demonstrated that this year, and we're going to be scaling them up. Uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about in Network Capital is to be able to start using things like impact evaluators and hyper certificates, direct crypto native instruments, um, to be able to drive some of this growth. On the talent side, uh, we're going to be building talent attraction programs, a broader advisor network to help bring a lot of the knowledge from our much more extended community and help support uh, the network. So think of like actually reaching into you know, professors in different universities and you know, experts in, across the industry. And we're going to be building a, a a PL Academy uh, system to help um, the you know, many thousands of people in the network uh, level up and upskill in a range of, range of disciplines. Um, the kind of thing that we want to do here is like, um, help facilitate the creation of content um, in Web3 that's, that's not um, there yet. So think of deep uh, courses on, say, zero-knowledge proofs or um, how, to do, how to run people systems in, in crypto-native teams. And we want to kind of structure a lot of that um, learning uh, through kind of this more course-oriented structure. Uh, the other part of that is being able to leverage the vast quality of uh, resources available today and kind of connect it. So I often thought the, one of the most valuable things that university classes ever had was a syllabus. And that distillation of like helping you navigate the vast ma material out there is one of the most useful things that professors ever do. So we're going to be um, thinking of doing that to help distill what's like the really high quality um, material out there to help support you. On the uh, knowledge area, um, we're going to be doubling down on the advisor network, so connecting that network to, to office hours. So that imagine being able to like build on that office hour program to, to find a lot of knowledge there. We're going to double down on the team summits and scale those. Um, and we're, we're going to start tweaking kind of the office hour structure to try and make it even more efficient, find ways of um, facilitating that time, and you know, potentially building like feedback structures and so on. Uh, on the services side, uh, we're going to uh, continue growing the marketplace structure, and we're going to be instrumenting with metrics and feedback and so on. So a lot of the teams here build on top of IPFS and Filecoin. So here's a glimpse at some of the major uh, things that we see on that roadmap uh, for next year. There's a lot of optimization that needs to happen. So think of many systems uh, growing and improving, and some major breakthroughs that are going to be shipped. So um, Falcon Saturn is going to ship an early uh, version later, um, I think it's later in the week. Um, the FVM, uh, which is already powering the network, is going to ship out in uh, Q1 to be able to support a lot of new uh, smart contracts. Uh, station and ceiling of service will, will arrive then, too. Then there will be a whole host of um, new networks that appear in, in the, as the FBM supports uh, L2. So think of a lot of uh, compute over data networks um, powered with Bacalao uh, or things like Medusa. Um, we also have a whole range of uh, improvements that are deeper, uh, things like interplanetary consensus arriving to help scale the entire network. Um, and things like Halo 2 and, and so on. Now, of course, this is like a, only a small snapshot of all of the amazing things that are going to happen uh, across the network. Uh, we don't yet have any kind of like integrated way of like seeing all of the roadmaps and so on. Uh, everyone kind of uh, builds, of course, their own natural uh, product offerings, pro uh, product offerings and roadmaps. So definitely encourage you to uh, navigate uh, the network and see what, what everyone's working on. Maybe next year we'll have like a way of like uh, being able to navigate this space better. 
Now, I want to give some principles to the whole network uh, for next year. One is optimize and scale. So think of doubling down on what's working, change what's not. Uh, we have a lot of like, really valuable systems and programs. Let's kind of grow them. Uh, think about how to optimize them well with impact metrics and feedback and so on. We, I see a lot of groups doing some extremely valuable work, but they're not really measuring what matters or they're not getting feedback from the users. And if you're not getting feedback from your users, then you don't know like, uh, how, to, how to orient the product. Um, we also need to um, ship many breakthroughs into production. So there's a lot of teams across the network that are building some extremely new, exciting things that need to land. So really focus on shipping that and, and driving usage. Uh, I also hope that most, so the second major principle is to focus on the end user product experience. Uh, a lot of teams have been building um, really amazing new technology, uh, but it doesn't yet have the extremely high quality product user experience that the broader world you know, in Web2 and mobile interfaces and so on expect. So you need to kind of instrument your products and optimize for extremely good product user experience. Find good ways of doing it in a, in a privacy-preserving way. Find good ways of doing it, doing it without sort of collecting um, personally identifiable information and so on. That's very possible. Uh, don't let decentralization or security get in the way of optimizing a good product, meaning find a way to have both. Um, now, that also applies to all of the programs to support the network. We need to instrument and get feedback um, across all of them to make sure that we're, those programs are good products that everyone can benefit from. The third major principle is to strengthen the connectivity of the network. We want to deepen the relationships, um, a, you know, invest deeply in, in office hours uh, and kind of gathering in, in those team summits, uh, double down with events and so on. And I want to encourage all teams to work openly. So we've had major successes across the network uh, with many groups publishing all of their roadmaps, publishing all of their notes, publishing their um, uh, maps, and so on. Uh, use you know, all hands and, and so on. Uh, that's extremely useful to help many teams across many parts of the network uh, work together. So think of leaning into that. Now for ch some challenges. So this, is, this has been a, a very intense year. The macro environment has like totally plummeted. It's a very hard for a lot of companies. Um, and that macro environment also took down um, crypto. Now, uh, fundraising is already really hard this year, and it's going to be harder. My, my guess is that it's likely going to be harder early next year. Uh, now, of course, you know, who knows? But um, the market could recover very quickly. But uh, my prediction or my, my expectation is that uh, it will actually be quite hard. And especially for the companies um, going from C to Series A or from Series A to Series B, like those will be like very hard jumps. Um, so kind of expect like a, like a significant Series A crunch early in the year. Maybe the market will warm up, so maybe the latter part of the year will be fine. Um, but don't count on it. Um, you know, really plan out your, your map, your runway, and so on. And if you don't have a runway to last you into 2024, you should be thinking about how to make sure that your, your team has a good, safe path uh, into that. And of course, you want runway uh, much further out. Like, ideally, you have many years of runway. Uh, but most small startups always have somewhere between 6 and, and 24 months of runway. So this time, it's going to be hard for all those groups. Uh, that means lean into the programs that we talked about today, all the capital fundraising uh, systems. And you know, come talk to us. We're here to help you think through this. Um, uh, all of this kind of stuff can be done much easier if you have time to plan. What is, uh, I highly recommend one of um, the default alive, uh, default dead or default alive uh, essay from, I think PG wrote this. It's an extremely useful um, uh, way of thinking about how your organization is operating. Um, you want to be, uh, you want to have enough runway to be able to um, make significant movements uh, to, to, to fundraise. So you want to have always more than um, six to six to twelve months of runway. Now, um, again, come talk to us if you need help with that. It's going to be, uh, we're here for you. Uh, we're here to support, and with more time, we have more ability to um, help you sh uh, shape a, a good fundraise. So think think of things like, hey, actually, like your product is actually quite good, but you have enough time to like. Um, adjust this thing, focus on this growth, and then prove that you can do this um, because that seems to be like the major thi thing holding people back. That's the kind of feedback that we can give you um, when you have time. Um, now, uh, one of the things that's going to help us, uh, help you with this kind of thing, is get getting um, uh, regular updates from you on how you're doing. Uh, so especially like around runway and burn and so on. Um, if you share some of that uh, knowledge and info, then we can help you map on to sort of like how the um, uh, what other groups are doing, and so on, and help you advise you. We sometimes see very early teams uh, just spend way too much money and not, not, um, 
uh, you know, too, too much money too fast, and then they kind of run out of money quickly. So we can be a sounding board for you to help you uh, optimize. Uh, now, um, the, 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 like I mentioned earlier, a lot of our products are really, have amazing, really cool, high-quality technology, and they work really well in Web3. We have to cross the chasm and get to Web2. So I really encourage everyone to focus on extremely polished UX, focus on getting to high-quality, valuable um, use cases that can bring in the growth and adoption into the hundreds of millions and billions. Today, most of Web3 is kind of like topping out at like 100 to maybe 200 million users. Um, you know, some, some rare exceptions have like more or something. But for the most part, Web3 is quite small relative to Web2 by usage size. And that's because of the you know, kind of primarily financial set of use cases and really bad UX. So if we solve the problems that, it, that can yield extremely good UX, then we can get to billions of users. Um, again, I see a lot of things that need optimization, so focus on that. Um, and you know, ship your breakthroughs, gain users. Uh, one thing that is also pretty interesting right now, which is a, a, a challenge that you can turn into an opportunity, uh, there's a lot of uh, teams across the network that need to hire a lot, especially groups that, that uh, raced recently. Uh, hey, in crypto macro winter time, it's way easier to hire. So this is a great time to uh, find amazing people um, to help uh, to join you. Uh, definitely lean, lean on us and work with the talent team. So now, that's you know, the challenges up ahead of us. Uh, let's focus on the opportunities. Winter is a great time to build. Uh, just PL itself started in a, in a crypto winter. Um, you know, think of Ethereum scaling massively through, through building a ton of um, itself and its early systems through, through winter. Um, and this, you want to use this moment in time to uh, level up your systems. Uh, you know, really stay focused on getting to the next important milestones. If you don't have a roadmap right now and you don't quite know what you're shooting for, really think of having some set of concrete uh, goalposts that can help you, you and your team and community stay focused on delivering that goal and keep sort of compounding that improvement. Um, these major macro winters tend to, uh, you know, you can go back through, through history. Of course, like, who knows what the future holds, but if it's anything like the last couple hundred years, um, then, you know, these kind of winters uh, only last, you know, somewhere between one to three, maybe five years in, like, the extreme cases, and usually markets return. So, um, you know, kind of stay focused, deliver improvements, and, um, and build. And of course, leverage the network. We have an amazingly, uh, amazing group of people that's growing a ton. Um, leverage that group um, to, to help solve your challenges. Now, there's a lot of products that are really working well, and at a lot of networks that, are, that are, um, have seen a lot of early success compound that growth. I've seen a lot of teams kind of start getting distracted with way too, mean, uh, too many feature sets. Um, growth matters tremendously in these kinds of systems. Focus on the kinds of things that are going to give your operations and systems a lot of growth, because you can, if you do that, you'll, you'll end up with larger and larger groups that create and bring a lot more value. So because we're primarily building you know, large-scale products for large networks, that growth in users or that growth in participants ends up bringing a lot of value alongside with it. So in many cases, um, you know, some notable exceptions, but most um, very successful companies and groups in the last you know, 20 years have been extremely hyper-focused on growth um, and, and use that to drive a lot of your, your decision-making. Now, um, we have extremely strong teams across the network, and they're growing. Focus on their growth. So think about, um, you know, really encourage everybody here, no matter how early you are, to be thinking about the growth of the people in your organization. Think about leveling them up. Think about their career paths, their growth trajectories. Think about how to support them to, uh, to learn more. Um, the start startups are a grind. Uh, they're really hard, and it's very easy to lose focus um, away from people's growth. You're kind of like constantly in this reactive, like immediate mode. It's very, very useful to have a good trajectory to know um, how to compound your your own personal growth, because that's going to enable you to um, level up and, and have even more impact in the future. Uh, again, a whole host of opportunities will come from major breakthroughs like FVM, Saturn, and so on. Um, and there's going to be a bunch. Of my, my, my guess is there's going to be a bunch of new crypto networks uh, that many, many of you go out and start in, in the next year or two. Uh, pr many computer over data networks, uh, CDN networks, and, and many more. So looking forward to a lot of like, really awesome things there. Um, and uh, so that kind of sums up uh, PLV9. You know, really focus on these six offerings. Build a network, help people start projects, help um, fundraise uh, capital, help find amazing talent and help it grow. 
uh, help gather and systematize our knowledge and help access world-class services. Let's remove that innovation chasm so that the pipeline can flow really well. And let's help every one of these organizations and companies um, level up and grow. Thank you so much.